George thought the best vegetables in the world came from the market. I was thinking about making vegetable soup tonight. But that got me thinking about Chef Paschetti's fresh vegetable soup and spinach ravioli. Are you thinking what I'm thinking, George? <laughs> Minestrone with extra carrots and spinach ravioli for two. Natty, stop! Don't take that order! Huh? Is something wrong, Chef Paschetti? Wrong? Oh, yes. I am all out of carrots and spinach. I, Piscetti, have failed you. Chef, can't you just go get some fresh vegetables? I don't want to keep them waiting. <laughs> oh, we'd wait all night for your fresh vegetables, Chef. Uh -huh. They're the reason we come here. <laughs> uh, you want to help me get fresh veggies off the roof, Giorgio? <laughs> Did he say the roof? Doesn't the grocer make the fresh vegetables at the market? You see other veggies grow on farms far away, then they travel to a store where they sit around until you buy them. My veggies grow here, go down to the kitchen, then to your belly on the same day. George didn't see any carrots here. <laughs> Veggies come from dirt. <laughs> weeds. Weeds. Oh, you monster also. Oh, weeds are bad. Very bad. You see, weeds like this soak up the water and nutrients from the soil that my veggies need to grow. If my veggies can't grow, my food won't be piscetti fresh. And if it's not, I will close it down. Oh. Yes, I will close my restaurant before I let anyone think piscetti is not the best they ever tasted. I must pull those weeds, but after working hard all day, I'm too tired to get it all done. George couldn't stop thinking about Chef Piscetti's weed problem. After working hard all day, was too tired to get his work done. Huh? Huh? <laughs> I didn't think you were paying attention. I'll start again. The shoemaker and the elves. Once there was a shoemaker who, after working hard all day, was too tired to get his work done. I am too tired to get it all done, he thought. But if I don't, my customer will have but one shoe and may hop over to another cobbler. He couldn't stay awake. As he slept, an amazing thing happened. Elves did his work for him. When the cobbler awoke, he didn't know how that shoe got finished. George wondered if a little monkey could be an elf for a chef. First thing the next morning, George did some secret elf waiting. George dug up every nasty green thing he saw. Three bags full. Hello, Giorgio. You want to come help me get fresh veggies for today's food? <laughs> now it was time for Elf George to see how happy he'd made the chef. I'm ruined! <laughs> it's all gone. The weeds and almost all of my veggies. What am I gonna cook? All of his 
friends like that. So George added more fun. <laughs> Poor himself. And in conclusion, bloody bloody blah, blah, blah etc. So forth and so on. <laughs> well, that's some hat. And yellow. <laughs> Can I see? Oh, boy, this is one fun hat. Wow, if I could have had a hat like this, I may never have gotten my yellow one. That was the best thing anyone ever said to George. You want me to have it? This is the best thing anyone ever gave me. Oh, surprisingly comfortable. You want me to wear it outside? Sure, why not? <laughs> Good after. Oh, some chapeau. George made it. <laughs> Having people see the man with the yellow monkey fun hat made George feel very proud. <laughs> Hi, Charky. Oh, easy, girl. Oh, no. I'm late. George, I've got five minutes to get to the museum for my speech. I, I have to make a good impression. <laughs> George was tempted to play with the yellow hat. But the man had asked him not to because he needed to wear it to give a very important speech uh? at the museum. Uh. Oh, boy. Uh. Bye, George. Uh. Bye, George. <laughs> and if an apple traveling at the speed of light hits a static banana... Oh! Everyone's here already. Great. Uh, Professor Wiseman asked me to speak today about the scientific method. <laughs> <laughs> of course, we've all heard the saying, what goes around comes around. Um, haven't we? Um, did I say something wrong? No, continue. This is fascinating. Whoa, what stuck to my hat? Oh! I'm wearing George's... <laughs> Actually, I, I can explain. The scientific method is about thinking creatively, taking chances, and being willing to fail. And you made that point very dramatically. I did? Oh, so modest. Now where can I get a hat like that? Well, George made it. I want one. I want two. <laughs> And that's how George got his picture on the museum wall. <laughs> to make a periscope, he needed something long and hollow. <laughs> and a couple of mirrors.
and some scissors. Figuring out where all the holes should go wasn't easy. a while to get the angle of the periscope just right. <laughs> he was going to need something to hold it all together. <laughs> At last, Double O Monkey had his spy periscope. Moment too soon. George's periscope worked great. He could see between things, over things, and around things. Nothing was too hairy for his periscope. <laughs> Except maybe Charky. his eye on the man with the yellow hat now. <gasps> a broken periscope can't stop a super spy with tools like a mirror and the brain of a monkey. This is very good. Really? But you know, it, it's not nice to spy on people. And it can ruin surprises like this. Now, do you want an official double O doggy periscope, or would you rather just make another one? You're a super spy monkey. You need lots of ways to keep your eyes on things. Bruno got out of the apartment. <laughs> Being near a snake, makes any mouse nervous. But Bruno wasn't interested in mice. His stomach was full, and he just wanted to find a comfortable place to relax. The coat was warm, quiet, and dark. 
a perfect rest stop for a snake. Me, George. I need to wear this. Hundley didn't know what that was. But if George was around, it was probably going to be sloppy. <laughs> oh. <laughs> George, I have to go to work now. Soft soil is always inviting to a gopher snake. Why, thank you, George. How nice. I can take it from here. small. Bruno wanted to get back to his old habitat home. <laughs> Benji and Willy wished they'd never left their habitat. Bruno thought the mice might know the way home, so he hurried to follow them. had never seen a furry, plump snake with feet before. And this was the first time Hundley had ever seen mice in his building. <coughs> Benji and Willie weren't lost. George knew Hundley would keep an eye on the mice. This monkey had a snake to catch. <laughs> Hundley didn't realize he'd run outside until it was too late to get back in. Maybe those mice would lead him to an open window. George? I hope Bruno, Benji, and Willie didn't give you any trouble. Everyone was happy. Back exactly where they belonged. Um, why is Hunley in our sink? Well, almost everyone. Hunley planned to stay put until he recovered from his adventure. gave himself another hour, so he'd be sure to see the blimp at sunset. Oh, just make sure you're on time. Oh, don't worry. I'll be early. Hey, you've still got some playtime left, George. <laughs> and I've still got a lot of time left to read. Wow, I must be getting faster.
<laughs> Can't be late. <laughs> Jelly donut? No, thanks. I thought you were going to get here early to talk to Mr. Ruffweek. And here I am, bright and early. He left two hours ago. What? I, I, the, I, I, should, that's not even possible. He'll be here for only a minute tomorrow. Last chance. There's got to be something wrong with my clock. <laughs> no, there's nothing wrong with this clock. Are you sure? Because I, I am later every day. Ah, that clock runs as well as I do. <laughs> okay, I'll go get your other clock and watch. Yeah, no, no rush. Look, George, I got my old clock back and my watch. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, you can adjust it just like the big clock. Boy, I hope you're more reliable. But sorry, Olga, it's nothing personal. Ooh, I'm gonna be late for book club. <sighs> if only there were more hours in the day. More hours in the day? George could help with that. <laughs> oh, this is great! I'm on my 27th book, and you may never have to go to bed again. <laughs> George, don't do that. It... Wait a minute. Have you been changing the clock? Uh -huh. Oh, no wonder I'm always late. <sighs> George, you shouldn't do that. <laughs> well, because our clock has to have the same time as all the other clocks. Huh? Your changing the clock caused us to miss a ride in the rough week blimp. <laughs> well, we do have one last chance. <laughs> Tomorrow. But, George, we have to show up on time. <laughs> Can't be late. <laughs> Mr. Ruffweek, this is the man I was telling you about. I'd like to set up a blimp ride. Too late. I'm flying to Cleveland this afternoon for the Sausage Festival. Oh. I'm sorry, George. Oh, yeah. it, it's for a monkey? Well, why didn't you say so? <laughs> Sausage can wait. I, I've never flown with a monkey before. <laughs> Now, would you like to be my co-pilot? <laughs> wow. Hey, George, you can see our apartment building. <laughs> I guess staying up late all week is finally taking its toll. Thank <laughs> you.